All right, scholars, welcome back to Amazing Science, and today we will be creating a circuit that will produce mechanical energy. Now, remember, mechanical energy is the energy of movement. Yes, we can actually take electrical energy, we can flow it in a closed circuit, and we can use that to make things move. You already know this. Yes, you do. Think about all the things that you have at your residence, the toys that you might have played with, remote control cars, right? With the remote control cars, we use electric energy and those tires start spinning and the car goes zoo and it flies across the ground. Yes, because we use electrical energy to produce all other kinds of energies. We just use it. It's so awesome. We use electrical energy and we use it and we convert it into all these other kinds of energy. Now we've already looked at light through a light bulb. We've already looked at sound through a speaker, just like the speakers we use at home, speakers that are in our cell phones, speakers that are on our PS4, speakers that are in our TVs. So we know that we can use electrical energy to create sound energy. We know that we can use electrical energy to create light energy. Same thing, TV, cell phone, PlayStation, all of these things that we use all the time our cars, the lights on your mom and dad's car, or grandma's car, or whoever's car you've ever seen or been in, use electrical energy to create that, to, to, to turn on that light energy, to convert into that light. It's so awesome. Science is awesome how energy can be converted into other different forms. And electrical energy is one of our most popular energy that we use to keep our way of life. Now, when we were looking at our circuit board, remember that there were different components. First, we had a battery. And a battery is a tool that we use in science to produce electrical energy. So a battery is a source of energy. It's a source of energy. It's where we get our energy from in circuits. We actually store energy in batteries. So I can take this battery with me wherever I go. And although it has a limited capacity, I can take it with me. I don't have to be plugged into a wall. That's really, really awesome. We have a switch. A switch is a tool used to open and close the flow of electrical energy. We use it to open and close the flow of electrical energy. And remember when it's open, that electrical energy comes up the conductor, but it can't, it can't reach it. The electrical, all the parts in a circuit have to be touching so that the electrical energy can flow seamlessly all the way around. Remember a circuit is a complete path through which an electrical energy can flow. We also said that one of our tools was a wire. And we remember that a wire is composed, composed of insulators and conductors. And how awesome it is to be able to use that information to keep us safe, but also to make life more convenient and to use our science. So the inside of the wire is metal because we know that metal is a conductor of electrical and thermal energy. The outside of the wire is plastic because we know that plastic is an insulator of electrical and thermal energy. So I can touch the outside of this wire and electricity can be flowing through the inside and I'm still safe. Just like I can have on the plastic glove and I can touch the metal plan when I'm making my ramen noodles and I'm still safe. So plastic are insulators that help keep us safe as we're doing science. Now today, what are we gonna be doing? We're gonna be taking our circuit board and we're going to be doing the exact same thing. We're gonna create a complete circuit. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put our source of energy in there. So now we have our battery. And we also remember that we have to have our wires because wires are a tool to carry the flow of electrical energy. But notice, it's not flowing to anything. There's nothing to do with this. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add our switch because we wanna be able to close and open the flow of electricity. And then we have to take our wire and it has to connect because all of our conductors have to be touching. It has to flow from here all the way around to here. Now right now it's open. So that means that when it's open, it's broken absolutely and then if I was to close it it would flow but it's still not flowing because we have to make it all the way back over to this other battery terminal in order to be successful now we're gonna add one more wire and then we're going to come to our battery terminal are we ready okay so this is actually a motor that you can see right there. Now what should happen if the electrical energy is, is flowing is when I touch this motor to this side of the battery terminal, we should get some action right here on my hand because we have a complete circuit. And notice it's also a series circuit. It's just one path where electricity is flowing. It's just one path where electricity is flowing. I lost my terminal right there. 
Come on, come on, come on, come on. There we go. And I lost it again. All right, let's see if we can try this one more time. I'm actually going to put this off in there to give it a little bit more stability so that you can see what I see. Come on. There we go. And we're ready to go. So now we have our circuit, we have our circle, and now we have our motor right here. Now let's watch what happens whenever I do this. Now I, I want you to make an observation and then I want you to tell me uh, what happened and why. Hmm. Why is, why is nothing happening? Like, what am I doing that, why is nothing happening? I want you to use your science and explain to me why nothing is happening. It, it looks like, let's see, let me follow the flow of energy and see if I can figure it out. Energy is flowing, energy is flowing, energy is flowing, energy is flowing, energy, oh, my goodness, do you see what I did? I forgot to close the switch. So the electrical energy can't flow because the switch is open and when it's open, it's broken exactly scholar so if i close the switch i wonder what's going to happen i'm pull my motor up so we can see it again and here we go i'm going to close my switch oh. there we go look at that we are creating mechanical energy and sound energy because you can hear it open broken closed it flows open broken Close it froze. It sounds like a weed whacker. Has anybody ever cut the grass? It sounds like a weed whacker. All right. So now we have learned that we can use a circuit to produce electrical. We can use a circuit to produce, I'm sorry, light energy. We can use a circuit to produce sound energy. And now also we can use a circuit to produce mechanical energy. And mechanical energy is the energy of movement. Sound is caused by vibration and then light is a wave, it's a particle that we can see. So all of those things are awesome and all of that knowledge is awesome. We're gonna go over our parts to a circuit one more time before I let you guys out of here. I'm gonna hold it up, I want you to tell me what it is. What is this? It's a battery, right? And a battery is a source of energy and it is something that we can use to create a energy. We actually store energy in batteries. Battery has a positive and a negative end. And in order for a circuit to be complete, the energy has to flow from one side of a battery all the way to the other side. Exactly. All right. What about this? What is this? This is a wire, right? And a wire is made of insulators, the plastic, and conductors, metal. And how does that keep us safe? Oh, how does it keep us safe? Right, 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 right. It keeps us safe because the insulators protect us from the energy that is flowing through the metal wires, right? And then last but certainly not least, we have a switch. And a switch opens and closes the flow of the energy. So we can open and close just like we do a light switch at home. Or my PlayStation, I turn it off and I turn it on. I'm opening and I'm closing the flow of energy. So that is a little bit more about sound, uh, about circuits. Oh, and don't forget, we also talked about series circuits. I want to keep saying that word over and over and over again. Whenever you have multiple objects in one path, multiple objects in one path, they are part of a series circuit. This is a series circuit. It's multiple objects in one path. And remember, with the series circuit, we saw a decrease in the amount of uh, luminousness of the light. The light was less luminous when we had multiple lights. Like right now, you can barely see it. But if I take one of those off and uh, just run them through a wire, let's see if we can get it. It's much more bright. It is much more bright. I'm still asking the question, why? Why do you think that is? Why is it so bright if it's just one light? But if I have multiple lights in a series, meaning they're back to back to back to back to back, there it shines, but it's so dim. So that's another thing that we're going to get into next time. We're going to be talking about parallel circuits next time. And then after that, we're going to give you a circuit challenge. It is literally a circuit challenge, and you're going to help some famous car company 
just do something that they've been trying to do for a very long time. So have an absolutely wonderful day, and we will be back on soon with more amazing science. <laughs>